Hello and welcome, hey -o, to Omni Dogs Vault. This is, I got to make sure I don't say Omni Bros because that's what I'm used to uh, introducing, but this is Omni Dogs Vault Live. And my guest today in conversation and review and critique is Kristen Robertson, a fangirl, fangirls, yeah. member of fangirls. Kristen, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. So far, so good. Um, you are taking part in a show. We can do a little promo for it that starts tonight, August mm -hmm. 5th. At, that's Sunday at 8 p.m. is when the show is going to be. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, specifically, we are going to talk about Hickvengers because that's the cool thing to do. Right. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about our hauls, what we're reading. Uh, it's it's going to be really fun. It's it's me, uh, Faria, and Maddie, and they're wonderful. You guys may know them from, you know, well, your channel. They know Faria from your channel. Right. And Maddie's from Near Mint Condition, and they're awesome. And we're just fangirls talking about, you know, the important stuff, like Captain America's beard, <laughs> uh, all the controversial things that are going on that, you know, other people may not touch, but we're going to talk about it. And, uh, you know. Hickvengers tonight. I'm still finishing reading it, but I'm going to in time. <laughs> Is this both volumes or did you say just volume one? Uh, both. Yeah, all of it. Oh, both. Wow, that's yeah. a huge subject to tackle. It's It's been a lot for me. <laughs> it's my first Avengers book, so I'm like kind of a little overwhelmed, but I'm working through it, you know. Yeah, I did a review of uh, Hickvengers one and there's three or four major story arcs that happened just in that book. And it's not just Spider-Man loves Mary Jane. It's like these high concepts of yeah. science fiction physics and everything that get turned inside out. And it's a lot. I've, I'm in the middle of book two and I found it's a little uh, easier to understand, but Hickvengers one was a solid, um, I mean, it was a great read. I loved it, but it was a crazy, in-depth, deep, all over the place kind of stuff. I mean, just a little tease of my thoughts. Yeah, that first half, I was like, uh, what's happening pretty much the whole time? <laughs> and then the second half, <laughs> I am understanding it more, and I feel a little less stupid. So I do think I'm enjoying the second half more, which I know is also controversial to say because most people love the first half more, but... I'm just understanding it more, which I like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you guys you guys do tackle the, the tough subjects. I tried to bring up something with Luis, and then the next night I tried to bring up something with Omar. And both of them are like, whoa, wait a sec. That's not <laughs> what we do here. Whereas you guys just dive right into those controversial topics. I mean, I, we think some things are just important to talk about and yeah. we don't tackle it in a way where we're like, oh, we think we're right about this or, you know, or everybody sucks if they think this or that. Like, it's just, hey, this is happening and here's how we feel about it because everyone has feelings about this thing. Right. We probably all know what we're talking about and, you know, people are thinking about it, so we might as well talk about it. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you guys aren't afraid to tackle them. I, I just tried to bring them up and I mean, the conversations went well, but uh, it was clear from the reaction of the fans in the chat that they weren't really that excited for me to bring it up. It was <laughs> mostly like, shut up and talk about comics. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So speaking of shutting up and talking about comics, we've got some comics that we're gonna talk about and review. What would you like to talk about first? Uh, let's, let's go with Roughneck first. It's the top of my pile. Okay, let's see, where is Roughneck here for me? Good, yeah, Roughneck. Got it. Which, um, just as a book, it's very pretty. And I like the size of it. It's a little chunky. You know, for people who care about those things, I like it. Mm hmm So this is by Jeff Lemire. Um, I, how do I summarize this book? <laughs> oh. uh, I really enjoyed it until kind of the end where I'm not going to spoil the end or anything, but I feel like it didn't have an ending. It just kind of was there. And then I was like, Oh, what did I read? What did I, what did I, you know, take my time out to read? Did something really happen in this book? That's ultimately how I felt about it. And, you know, just as a, a disclaimer for myself, I'm a huge Jeff Lemire fan, 
Mm -hmm. but I have to be honest about his work. So I still really enjoyed it. I'm glad I have it, but you know, and I love the art. I love his art. Do you? Because that's interesting. A lot of people are turned off by it. It's pretty scritchy scratchy. Yeah. Um, somebody right-handed drawing left-handed type of thing. Sure. It's, it's an acquired taste, I think. Yeah, and it was one of those things I immediately loved it. So I think it's one of those love or hate sort of situations with him. And some people can get through it and some people can't, but I love it. Right, I thought it worked really well with Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Um, his style, and actually I liked Roughneck. Um, I thought it, um, he he's kind of getting stereotyped that it's always about the washed up hockey player. Right. But I thought this was a really good um, kind of examination of that washed up hockey player and, mm -hmm. and what he goes through and trying to set things right and things like that. Um, so I, uh, and I have, and I, I hate to admit this, but I haven't read Essex County yet. Oh um, no. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> I know, my nerd credentials are gonna get revoked. Um, I mean, you know I have a tattoo, right? Do you? I, Right here, this is the bird. I don't know if you can see it. This is the bird that flies throughout the whole book. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just admitted that to you. <laughs> hey, I'm not mad about it. I'm excited you get to experience it for the first time. Well, it's true. Yeah, um, yeah that and, um, like Rachel Rising and Echo are just staring at me from the Terry Moore, Jeff Lemire area of my shelf um, <laughs> saying, why haven't you read me yet? I mean, they're still in the shrink wrap and everything, which of course I'm famous for having my books in the shrink wrap to much derision from people, derision from people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked Roughneck well enough that I kept it and I'm gonna reread it again. Um, I enjoyed, all the different coloring that went on in it, if you can call it coloring, a lot of it's just um, blue shading and things mm -hmm. like that. But then there is There's some, some blood splatters every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like the memories I think are all in color. Is that how it was? Yeah, yeah I think so. Really cool. I think these memories are in color um, of his being a hockey player. Um, but yeah, I, I think that his art style works um, in his own stuff. And um, I, I enjoyed this book. Um, I enjoyed it better than one of his books that we're going to talk about later or maybe next. I also liked it more than that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, I'm being chastised in the chat that I haven't read Rachel Rising yet. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I suck. I haven't either, and I own that hardcover. <laughs> so <laughs> I suck too. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, um, I, there's so much that I have to read. So I, I don't know. I'm in the middle of my Hick Avengers readathon and I'm trying to fill in, uh, with a bunch of skinny Marvel trades. So I get something else read and those things are easy to blaze through. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe this fall, um, will be the time I catch up on, on like Essex County, Rachel Rising, Echo, The Eat or Not, I need to read, um, stuff like that, some of the super independent stuff. Yeah, I need to start doing that after I read Hick Avengers. <laughs> I need to go to lighter, shorter things for a little bit. Yeah, oh, and Free is telling us we both suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe's in the chat. Thanks for joining us. Nash Villains in the chat. I just put your book in the mail yesterday, Nash Villains. Um, well, so wait, who is who is um, the Omnibus Collectors Network? I was wondering that. If Gabe is Gabe Infinity Watch, I wonder who Omnibus Collectors Network is. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, Nash Villains, you're welcome. Uh, they picked it up right from my house. What uh, what other books do we have in common that we've both read? Um, do you want to go to the one we kind of referenced a second ago? Yeah, sure, that'd be good. You have okay. your copy. I think I gave mine away. I have my copy, and I have to point out that this is like the super. I don't know if it's super limited, but a limited edition Comic Con from like two years ago. Um, actually, had my friend Kyle, Kyle Starks. Everybody should read his books. 
um, pick this up for me because the artist, Amy Lennox, was at Comic-Con. And so she signed it. I do really like the art in this book. Um, Jeff Lemire wrote it, Amy Lennox drew it. I really like the art. But it's pretty much about this group of kids who live in a world where there's a superhero and a super villain. It's been a while since I read it, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> no, I, I blanked it from my memory, I disliked it so much, so. Well, um, and these, yeah, these kids, like, I really thought they would eventually become redeemable in some way, but they ended up all just kind of being awful kids. Like there's a girl who's being bullied and a kid, another little boy is being bullied and they kind of just, this book is Plutona, uh, E. Yeah. Tyler. We're talking about Plutona. Um, Sorry, I forgot that's not on the cover here. <laughs> yeah, this is Plutona by Jeff Lemire. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, five issues by Image. Um, but yeah, the, for me, the kids did not become redeemable at all. And my least favorite thing about it is like at the end, it didn't really end. Kind of like, I mean, Roughneck had more of an ending than this. This really didn't end. Like, and it made me so upset because I pretty much enjoyed it until there wasn't an end. And then I was like, wait, I didn't enjoy all of that because nothing ended up happening. Yeah, as I recall, it just sort of tailed off and you get yes. no resolution. None for any of the characters. There's a hero and a lot of, I won't spoil it, but a lot of stuff happens with her. And just it, nothing happened. Like, I have no idea what happened with her. I don't know what happened with the kids. The kids were terrible and they didn't have a redemption story when I thought they may. I, it was just not, not worth my time ultimately. And I kind of hate that I have this nice little hardcover <laughs> for no reason now. Yeah, such a collector's item. And yeah. it's not even something that you dig. If it had another trade right after that, they could have wrapped things up. Everything would have been great. I was nearing the end, like, how is this going to end? Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not worth your time. I do not recommend. No, I don't either. And that's hard to say about a Jeff Lemire, bo Lemire book because you, you know, obviously yeah. you're a fan. You have something tattooed on you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a huge fan of his too. So I, that was a big disappointment for me. Me too. Um, let me just address uh, the chat. Lyric Bembry, uh, PM me and I'll see what I can do for you about the um, Facebook group. Um, we, we are accepting members, but we've tightened up our acceptance because we were getting trolls. So there's, it's super restricted to get in. So PM me and, and I'll tell you what's going on. Um, so what else have we talked about? Um, I I thought a good book that we both liked was Giant Days. Yes. That's one of my favorites of all time. Oh, look, you've even got the hardcover. A fancy little hardcover. And what volumes does that have in it? Um, well, it doesn't say anywhere. I think it's like one to six, maybe eight, something like that. Okay. Uh, the, the trades have like four issues in them and there's six trades i think yeah and there's only two of these books right now i think the next one comes out in a month or two okay yeah that's something that i have not upgraded uh i feel fine about um just keeping it in trades although those hardcovers are way nice looking they are really nice and there's good amount of like covers and stuff in the back yeah, um, this book uh, just roughly, I believe, takes place in Britain because they call it university. Yes. And their first semester, um, did the first couple of books deal with their first semester, these girls. Um, and they're, they're dealing with, uh, they're, there's no superpowers in this book. It's just slice of life, what's going on and the misadventures they get into. As a former college student, I can tell you there's plenty of misadventures to get into when you're in college. And um, this person, who who wrote this? Because it's really written. John Allison, who is British, so yeah. Ah, uh, okay, but he's not a woman. So right. that's interesting that he has such a good ear and eye for the behavior of women. Um, because this seemed, I mean, 
not being a woman, but I can say these seemed real and relatable as characters, um, which is one thing I liked about it so much is that the way he, he wrote it, you can relate to the characters and it seems, um, it seems true to how someone would re behave. Yeah, that's my favorite part about it. Like the dialogue really, because I feel like they're all, all four girls, they're like best friends and they're a nice like mixture. Like I can find, I can relate to it, um, mm. to each girl in a certain aspect of their life. And I know John Allison in some interviews has said that he, I mean, these girls are his personality, but like split up. Like he relates to these girls more than all the guys in the book. Oh, okay. Which is fun. <laughs> Um, also, this hardcover is the first two volumes. I looked it up, so. That oh, okay. So there eventually there'll be three hardcovers for the six books. Mm -hmm. And I actually read this uh, in singles on Hoopla, so I'm almost called up, caught up to like what's currently happening uh, because I love it so much. It is just like the joy book. If I'm reading something that's super dark and upsetting, I finish that. I need to go to Giant Days because it's gonna make me laugh. I'm gonna yeah. have a good time. Even if they're going through like bad stuff, it's still super funny and just, I've never read another thing like it, I feel like. Even though it's just girls and it's a slice of life thing, like it's so funny and relatable. Yeah, it's got its own unique personality for a book. Um, and they're, they're easy to read, they're fun and fast reads. Um, I should probably do a dedicated review of this so it gets more uh, press uh, because I think it deserves it. Although I think that it's probably pretty popular for, for a small book from Boombox. I think it's already probably pretty popular. The fact that they've come out with it in an oversized hardcover, I think shows that it's already um, pretty well noticed. Yeah, and they're still releasing them. So, and I think um, they're going to come out with an original graphic novel soon. So that's just an additional story. They're going to have a standalone trade. Mm. Uh, and I think I'm pretty positive they're also going to have a young adult novel based wow. on the characters. So, this guy's prolific. Um, I don't know if he's writing it, but it is the characters. Yeah. Well, these these trades have come out fairly quickly, right on top of another, mm -hmm. which is great. Since you don't have to wait like Copperhead yeah. three years be between tw <laughs> trades. Yeah, if you do the hardcovers, it's going to take you more time, which is anything, I guess. But it does seem like they're hitting those trades pretty hard. Yeah. You um, actually mentioned a name earlier that you're friends with somebody. Who is that again? Kyle Starks. He is wrote. He the uh, one that wrote Rock Candy Mountain? Yeah, he wrote Rock Candy Mountain. I just highlighted that book in a video last night. That's an awesome book. Awesome. Uh, I'll tell him you love him. <laughs> where do you now? Where do you know him from? Uh, I actually like he lives in my hometown, which is not far from where I live now. So, um, but it's weird. We actually met at Lexington Comic Con, which is in Lexington, Kentucky, and we just kind of went up to his booth. Didn't know him, uh, my fiance and I. And we liked his art, so we started talking to him. Um, and we left the con not even knowing he was literally from where we were living. Mm. <laughs> and then we found that out later. And so we went to like a local comic shop he was doing a thing at, and he's like, oh, we should hang out. So then we became friends and we play games like every now and then when he's not doing cons, because he's real popular right now. <laughs> but yeah, he's super cool. Yeah, well, if you see him, I, I definitely dedicated a chunk of my vid uh, last night um to that book and that was um i forget the exact name of the video but it was uh comic book stories without superheroes in them oh cool so no capes and tights just s some slice of life some science fiction mm -hmm. um some of these books that we're talking about giant days and um clean room which we can talk about they were both on there on that list um uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely. Kyle Starks is cool. I love the Rock Candy Mountain. This is another book of his you should read. Kill Them All. Uh, I can't find my new copy of it. I have that somewhere. But, yeah, Kill Them All and Sex Castle. There it is. There it is. Oh, Oni Sex Press Castle. Just, Oni Press just re-released this um, in color, and it's awesome. That's Sex Castle? This is Kill Them All. Um, oh, okay. 
I think I have the old version of Sex Castle somewhere, but but he also wrote Sex Castle. You will like this. If you like like 80s uh, movies and action movies and hilarity, like you know his dialogue's really funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really like his art. Like I like how cartoony and fun it is. And this is this is a joy. And this is a quick, like funny. I think you will really dig it. This and Sex Castle are similar in themes and really good. Awesome. Well, you you suggested a couple things last night, and I'll have to actually let me get my phone and add that to the list. Um, kill them all. It'll be easy for me to remember because it's the Metallica. Oh Maybe yeah, the Metallica <laughs> album. Kill them all. Um, I must have moved Sex Castle, but yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Eisner nominated Sex Castle. Oh, all right. When, what year? This year? Uh, no, this year was Rock Candy Mountain. That was nominated for an Eisner. Uh, last year, I think, was, hold on. Let's see, does it say? No. Nope. I thought maybe Kill Them All was nominated, but I could be wrong. Uh, I think Sex Castle was maybe two years ago. Mm, okay. Um, okay, that's cool. Yeah, tell them I dig them. I dug Rock Candy Mountain. I will, for sure. I mean, you can't beat hobo fights. I mean, nobody can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris M, Ride the Lightning. I have the original pressings uh, on Metal Blade Records of Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning from when I worked in a record store and got them from England. Metallica we're talking about. That's awesome. <laughs> um, what would you like to tackle next? Mm, how about Alex and Ada? Okay. Uh, I only have the trades. I don't know what you have. I have the... You're fancy, right? Yeah. I am fancy. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have the fancy book um, that's got... Uh, I really liked the artwork in this just right off the bat. Um, now, I'm confused because I saw their names. Okay, Sarah Vaughn wrote it, and it's Jonathan Luna who co-wrote it and did all the illustrations. I thought that was his um, artwork, one of the Luna brothers. Um, so this is a story of uh, set in the not-too-distant future where there is there are sentient robots, varying degrees of sentient robots, and there it's elite i believe it's illegal to have one of your own am i right uh yes yeah um and the um the robots them so it's about alex who's lonely and gets given by his mom i think um mm -hmm. a robot companion and at first he fights it really hard and then he starts to um, get really into it with her and the, the fight for freedom for AI, the robots, artificial intelligence. They, they want their own freedom and they don't want to be treated like slaves and things. What did you think of this book? Uh, I loved it. I think it really brought up some like interesting concepts that I never would have thought about. I mean, obviously we don't have all of the technology that's in this book, and we don't have robots that actually work well, at least uh, right now. But this is a thing that maybe could really happen, you know, where robots could be become sentient, and then it's like, what do we do here? Because that's not a human, but that thing has feelings, mm -hmm. you know. So don't they deserve rights at that point too, or do they? And I, I loved the back and forth and the like political aspects of that. And I think at some point I cried, so. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, at the ending? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it hit me, as they say, right in the feels, too. Mm -hmm. um, this book's ending um, definitely is emotional. So to me, that means a comic book has done its job. For sure. Yeah. And it's something that, like, I can still look at and think about and recommend to people. Like, if you want something that's beyond maybe something you ever thought would be possible, but it will give you feel like you have feelings about this robot the whole time. It's so weird, you know, and that, that they did their job because it makes you think of something that 
maybe was beyond your scope of like imagination. Yeah, it um, and he starts out as pretty unlikable, but um, and he's messed yeah. up. But then he, um, but then he, she kind of brings out the humanity in him, in a way. I felt. Yeah, which is the ultimate, like, oh, that robot made you more human. <laughs> yeah, which to me, when you get when you actually care about a robot and a guy, and um, it seems far fetched, but when you actually start to care about their relationship, that's when I think it's a, a well done book. Um, the uh, um, I like his his art. It's it's simple, but it's expressive and pulls you in. And um, I just I really enjoyed this story because of the reasons we're talking about that it it um, it, it had it took a robot to bring out the guy's humanity and it, it was well written. This is a beautiful image book. I love image oversized hardcovers. I wish there was another one like right away for Paper Girls. I'm oh, digging yeah. that series. It's taking too long. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I um, love that they don't have. Um, Slip covers because I hate those. Yeah, this one doesn't have it. The image books, yeah, yeah like exactly. Books, yeah, yeah, you're right. Now that I look at them, you're exactly right. I'm, I'm of two minds of slip covers. I guess um, dust jackets. I, I kind of like them, but then I always end up taking them off to read the book, and then right. that's like an extra hassle. And I'm just like, it seems like they get in the way. Or like even with the uh, you know the Marvel oversized hardcovers. I like what's under that more than even what's outside of it. So it's like, wouldn't that be yeah. great if we didn't have to pull this off every time just to look at the nice cover, you know? Same with DC Rebirth. Those mm, yeah. those covers underneath the dust jackets are really cool. And yeah, um, I've seen uh, in the Omnibus group, um, somebody took the, all the dust jackets off of a, you know 15 or 20 Marvel oversized hardcovers and just had them displayed like that. And they looked really good. That's cool. Yeah, I, I don't have it in me to throw away dust jackets. I don't either. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I, but I would like to display them without the dust jackets. And speaking of dust jackets, this is my plea to DC to even though you've renamed it from Rebirth to DC Universe or whatever, please keep the same trade dress because it all looks really cool and uniform. It's like the most uniform shelf in my collection. All those nice like white spines. Yeah. yeah. Those are good. With the blue tops. Those look really cool. Um, I've got to make more room for them because they're becoming such a, a big part of my collection that um, I've got stuff actually stacked on the floor now. I've run out of room <laughs> so badly that I'm one of those people with books on the floor. Oh, no which is ridiculous. Um, that's that's what I've been doing, but we actually just hit up an Ikea like two days ago. So I have another shelf I need to put together and put on this wall and that'll help. <laughs> yeah, um, putting those calyx together is actually kind of fun because they're so substantial. Uh, I really dig those. Mm -hmm. I dig, that's what I have behind me, a calyx and then everything else is a various form of Billy. But um, I love these things. I. I wish I had room for another one, but I just don't. I've just taken up another room upstairs, the library upstairs. I'm going to have to somehow get my wife's books out of there so I can put my own books in there. She doesn't need those chick lit books anymore <laughs> anyway. She's not reading them again. Just one day while she's out, just kind of haul them somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, I need to slowly start replacing mm -hmm. them, you know, a couple at a time, a couple at a time. Till I have established dominance <laughs> over what was once there. <laughs> um, let's see in the chat. Surf Punk says, "Hey Jess, check out Hans Zimmer, the Pacific soundtrack. It's amazing. I love Hans Zimmer, um, so I will definitely check that out. I have uh, I have a lot by him already, but I I'm not familiar with the Pacific soundtrack. So thanks, Surf Punks." Um, there's Tyler Trent. Hey, Tyler, how's it going? Um, why don't we get clean room out of the way? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because um, I loved this book, but you said you struggled with it a little bit. 
Well, uh, I really, I've only read the first volume and I did really enjoy it. I loved the art. I think the art was incredible. Um, and it was very interesting and fascinating, but the whole time I was just like, what am I reading? What is this? What the, what, what's happening, right? Uh, so I kind of want to know where it goes. And he told me there's only three volumes, so I might as well read the next two. Um, and I did enjoy it. I just, I'm not sure what I enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clean Rooms by Gail Simone, and I think it's her best book. It's a book I recommended in my non-superhero books, uh, although it's very science fiction-y. She's uh, like the leader of uh, a Scientology-type cult. Uh, the clean room is the very inside room. It's a real clean room type environment. Um, and you see a lot of it in volume two. This There's three volumes, and this is the last volume that has the really, really great art by John Davis Hunt. Um, and then book three has just very good art that does its best to keep up with uh, John Davis, who did the first two. But the art is phenomenal in these first two books. Mm -hmm. it whoops, I don't know if I can really show you that. <laughs> I just realized that guy was naked chaps wearing. I think it was just a butt. It's fine. OK. <laughs> um, but it's full of all kinds of interesting concepts like this uh, Astrid Mueller is the uh, a horror novelist uh, um, and the leader of the secretive cult. She can actually see um, these kind of psychic extra dimensional entities that prey on her world. And um, she gets attacked. I don't want to wreck it for you, but she gets attacked in the second volume. And that has repercussions uh, because there's all kinds of um, interdimensional um, interdim interdimensional beings that have infiltrated the earth and she can see. And there's of course a couple of conspiracies going on in this book. And she's, um, it's hard to get a bead on if she's good or bad. She's kind of both. Um, and a reporter is trying to uh, crack the code of what um, what she's about because she um, the reporter lost her brother to the cult. Or after reading Astrid Mueller's book, uh, the brother killed himself, and um, she's trying to get more into the cult and find out what it's about. Uh, so it's actually it's got a couple of different storylines going on in it but as someone who is a huge gail simone fan i love her red sonia i love secret six um i love gail simone i think this is the best thing she's written so i think you really be happy with volumes two and three of this story i i this is one of those things that i will go back happily and reread yeah, I'll definitely have to read that. Um, I did really, I was very interested in the reporter part of the story and her whole situation. Yeah, and here's some art from volume three. E. Tyler was asking for it. So it's similar. It's not quite as spot on, but it is similar. It doesn't, it's not so different that it takes you out of the story. It is similar to the style that was established in volumes one and two. Um, so this is what the art is like from volume three, and it does have a conclusion. Um, I won't say anything about it, but it does have, um, an interesting conclusion. And I just love this book. I, I don't think this book has gotten enough, uh, praise or recognition. So I, every chance I get, I will sing the praises of clean room because it's a, it's a lot of concepts pulled together really nicely by Gail Simone. So you really like the ending? Um, well, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil it for you, but it has, um, everything gets tied together and it has an ending. And I don't want to say whether I liked it or didn't because that okay. will influence you. So sure. I'll let you come to your own conclusion. Got it. Uh, uh, but I dug the book overall. I'll definitely read the next two. Okay, good. 
Um, we had a couple of questions in the chat. Babylon Shadows. Hey, Jess, did you ever look up Sky Doll? I just got a couple of the books and the art is insane. Um, I didn't get a chance. I haven't placed an order at all this week. Let me see if I can look on Amazon real quick and see what Sky Doll is. But yeah, you did recommend that to me. Sky Doll in books. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, it does, Amazon has, some, whoa, this is really good art. Um, Amazon has some interior pages. That's beautiful. Um, it looks like it's got something to do with elves. In, the par in a parallel universe, the existence of a sweet, lifelike android called Noah, a sky doll, has turned upside down. After fleeing her tyrannical creator and fleeing to the far reaches of the galaxy to the planet Sudra, Noah cannot seem to escape her past. This seems pretty European to me from the names and the layout, which is neither good nor bad. I'm just saying it. But it looks like it has, oh, I see. It's got a couple, okay, it's got a couple, several hardcovers. Okay, I'm going to see if this is available on in-stock trades and then see what I can do. Maybe I um, maybe I will place an order this week because I wasn't going to. I, there's nothing coming out that I was really that interested in. But thanks, Babylon. That's uh, That gives me something to uh, something else to buy that I won't get to read for <laughs> six months. Uh, the Ukami asks, when can we expect the next haul from you? <laughs> I just did a major haul earlier this week. It's going to take me another month or two to build up enough to do a haul vid. Um, I, I'll, it, it, let's see, we're at the beginning of August, so I'll probably do an August haul vid at the end of August. Um, because I did a June-July one, and that thing was massive. That was like a half-hour video. <laughs> Okay, so in stock only had one volume of Sky Doll. I, that looks like a book I want to get all three volumes. That that is a really cool book. Um, okay, so we covered Clean Room. We have a few more books we'd like to talk about. What else would you like to talk about? Oh, let's do Unstoppable Wasp. Ah, so unstoppable. They brought her back. They're bringing <laughs> her back, which is awesome. Yeah. It was one of those, um, I really I really enjoyed it. I had never read anything with Wasp at all. Um, and that girl is so smart. <laughs> and I love that. I think that's some, it's one of those books that like little girls need to be reading and everyone else needs to be reading. And little boys, you know, like kids could read this and be like, oh cool, I can science and I can, you know, be like this cool chick and I wanted more from it though. It ended and I was like, wait, where's the rest? I want I want even more because it got canceled, right? So yeah. I'm glad they're bringing it back. I am too. I, I wish they'd bring Mockingbird by Chelsea Kane back. I, I'm shocked that she's even coming back into comics. Um, but yeah, this is one of those ones that got canceled and they they filled out the whole um the rest of the issue with uh, the very first wasp appearance um but i'm like you i don't know that i'd read any wasp before this and it goes at a really fast pace it's it's um events move forward rapidly in this book and she doesn't stop very long to even catch her breath mm -hmm. um the circumstances that she um comes out of um let's see she was Oh, she was kept prisoner, right? Yeah. I forget the, for how long, most of her life or something, right? <laughs> yeah, the Red Room. Um, mm -hmm. Nadia's recruiting drive continues. The Red Room is on her trail, and they'll pull out all the stops to get her back. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a book that, one of those all-ages book that still appeals to adults. Right. It, it's not just a kid's book. Uh, she she puts together a band of female scientists that can basically solve just about anything, and I think uh, Moon Girl's in it too, who I like mm -hmm. a lot. 
Um, she's like the smartest person on your earth. Moon girl is smarter e even than Reed Richards. Although I'm now understanding that Valeria Reed Richards daughter is the smartest person on earth. So hmm. uh, it, it's a little bit of a controversy in Marvel, I guess, who's the smartest person on earth. You throw in Dr. Doom and Tony Stark. Um, I don't know who else is considered the smartest person, but um, I, I really dug Wasp a lot, and I was really happy that they're bringing it back because it's one of those lighthearted, really fun, really easy, but still deep uh, enough that it's it's got a lot of depth, and um, the the adventures they go on are pretty cool. Yeah, just her attitude. Like I loved that she was so happy, and even though she had went through everything she did in the red room, like. She came out of it and she has a great outlook on life and all of her friends she like gets together in that group are also have their own distinct personalities and they're really diverse and they're really also really fun and positive people. And you don't get that a lot um, in a lot of the big two titles, you know, like usually things are upsetting and I mean, I'm reading Hick Avengers where everyone dies and everything <laughs> sucks, and, you know. Like, it's nice to read something like this, which is the polar opposite. Yeah, and it's it's not um, it's not just to be brushed off or considered a palate cleanser. It's um, it's a substantial book with a lot going on in it. But yeah, it is light, um, certainly lighter than Hick Avengers. Um, and you're you're right that um, a lot of I noticed that my wife and I keep trying to get into television shows. You know, people are recommending because we want to get something that get, I don't watch a lot of TV. So we're trying to find something that we both like. And so much television that's recommended is so dark. Um, yeah. It, it, and I, I get it. That's, that's what's exciting to people. And that's what people want to glom onto. But that, I, I think that's the way with some comic books too, is that a lot of them are just so dark. You need a little lightness and levity in there. And I think Wasp fits the bill nicely. Have you watched uh, Santa Clarita Diet on Netflix? Uh, is that the one where, um, what's her name's a, like a zombie or needs to eat human flesh to Drew live? Drew Barrymore, yeah. Drew Barrymore, yeah. Is that good? I love it. It is hilarious it parodies the genre very well um you but it's also really dark that's kind of what made me think of it you know like it's dark in the sense that yeah she needs to eat people now and she's undead and she's trying to figure that out but it's also really light and the dialogue is just so funny and she's wonderful in it and her husband's wonderful and the whole cast i think it's worth your time that's what i'm saying <laughs> okay maybe it's fun that and it's lighthearted enough that um, that a woman that's not typically into zombies could get into it? Yes, I will say there is blood. And there is, you know, that first episode, there's a lot of vomit. So, I mean, if she doesn't like <laughs> oh. that sort of thing, <laughs> basically Drew Barrymore dies. This is not a spoiler, it's the first episode. Um, she dies and then she vomits a whole lot of vomit, like the most I've ever seen in my life. And <laughs> this thing comes up and then that kind of starts the mystery of it all and they have to figure out like what is going on with her and what's happening and it's it, I don't know if your wife your wife will like that um I know my mom loves the show but she can't watch anything with blood in it so she just turns away like every time <laughs> so maybe one of those situations but it's it's really it's a great balance and it's something like I've never watched before um well, that sounds good to me. I don't know if my wife would like it, but it sounds good to me. I but you should watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to watch. I need to finish Star Trek Discovery. Then I need to catch up on Legion, and then I need to somehow watch uh, the Stephen King um, TV show that's out now that takes place in Shawshank. I can't think of Castle Castle Rock. Mm, yeah. I need to watch that. Some people have been recommending that to me. So it's hard. I feel like I have to just be constantly reading comic books because um, we've got the Omnibros show, then I've got my own channel. I can't yeah. even remember the last time I read a prose book. It's probably been a couple Same. of years. <laughs> and there's nothing really wrong with that. I, I mean, um, 
it's fun to to read comic books all the time, but I don't mm -hmm. find myself watching much TV. Um, yeah, Mr. That. Toxic Me Seeks says, hey, Jess, my dad loves your streams. Can you say Dean to the camera for me? Hey, Dean, what's up, buddy? Thanks for liking my streams. I appreciate it. Dean, 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 Dean. So there's that shout out. Here's a question for you. Kristen, could you show those Lumberjanes hardcovers? I can never find a picture of them. Yeah. So they're not actually oversized. Um, the binding is pretty, mm, I guess it's not that tight. I think maybe the one I opened was, but, but yeah, they're really, um, they're really cute. I think they're worth it. If you like the series enough, which I love the series, so. Yeah, the binding's not that bad. I don't know what I was thinking. But it's not the best, but it's not that bad. And it stays open, so that is the best, I guess. <laughs> I like when you can just flop a book open and, and read it. So, they're pretty nice. They're not oversized, but they're pretty nice. And you have four of them? Yeah, this one just came out, I think, a few weeks ago. So there's only four out right now. I and I believe to, it's also need, two volumes per hardcover. Okay, I need to read that. It's, it's gotten, so good. Yeah, it's gotten rave reviews. I know you really like it. Um, I had a question in the chat. Let me see if I can address it really quickly. I'm going to have to get up. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to have to get up from my seat to do it. Um Question is, I have a question though. What is the difference between deluxe, absolute, and omnibus? Um, let me go grab um, examples of all three really quickly. Well, I'll point out while he's gone. This giant is, is the same size as Lumberjanes for anybody interested in it. So it's not actually oversized either. Okay, so you've got a regular trade paperback like Wasp, and then you've got Cosmic Odyssey Deluxe Edition, which is bigger. The Deluxe Edition's bigger. Then you've got an Omnibus. This is the Harley Quinn, of course, the greatest character ever. Um, you've got Harley Quinn that is just about the same size as the deluxe, but it's thicker and contains more stories. Then you've got the absolute, <laughs> which is the biggest, just about the biggest one of all. This is the size comparison um, and it's huge art and absolutes should be reserved for something that you really dig the art because it benefits so much from the super oversized pages that's um and that's why i have absolute justice alex ross art and it's awesome i have marvels by alex ross that's even bigger than this that's the like the platinum size marvels book i can't even i i don't want to bring it down because i'm afraid i'd knock over the whole table with it it's so huge but that's that's the difference between absolutes deluxes and uh now that i pulled this out i should probably take cosmic odyssey to baltimore to get signed by jim starlin oh that's yeah he, he was at awesome con when faria and i were there but every time we went to get his autograph he wasn't there and it's not like he had a huge line but he just wasn't there he was off taking a coffee break or something. Hmm. Yeah, I can show you what Marvels looks like. There's Marvels up there on the big bookshelf, the giant bookshelf. There's the famous Little Nemo that destroyed my <laughs> this destroyed my other laptop. But yeah, that's the those are the biggest books I own up there. How do you read a book that big? Do you just put it on a table? Yeah, that's hmm. what I do. You can see Marvels is still in the shrink wrap, but the other books like Little Nemo, yeah, I put it on the kitchen table. And then knock over drinks with it. <laughs> yeah. 
Speaking of absolutes, which ones do you two own? It's so hard to find videos on the ones that are not as popular. For example, I couldn't find a video on the Joker Luther absolute editions. Well, that's interesting. I don't own that particular absolute. I own absolutes of Promethea, Top Ten, Watchmen, Kevin Smith's Green Arrow, All-Star Superman, Kingdom Come, Final Crisis, Ugh, Identity Crisis. I don't even know why that's taking up space in my collection. <laughs> Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Superheroes, um, the collection by Paul Dini, uh, the book I just showed you, Justice, and then I've got a bunch of, I've got Absolute Wonder Woman, JLA Avengers, Authority, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, V for Vendetta, and then a bunch of Batman um, absolutes. I have one. <laughs> one? What one is it? I have one because it was like $20, and I've never read it. So oh. <laughs> that is why I own this. <laughs> What's the point? I know. Maybe I'll read it one day. <laughs> I love absolutes. That's... I. It's not my preferred format, but I, they're easier for me to read than Omnis because Omnis are so heavy. But they are, I mean, cumbersome. And there's Lewis McGregor checking in to say, hey, I recognize that old man. He was at Theodore Roosevelt's inauguration. Very funny, Lewis. Thank you very much. I appreciate the slap in the face. He's actually a good friend of mine, although you can't tell. <laughs> Um, let's see, where were we? We finished with Wasp, and I think that leaves us a couple more books. Yeah, how about Joyride? Joyride. What did you think of this? Oh my gosh, it's one of my favorites of the whole year. It, nice. And, and it ended great, and it was all, I don't even know how to explain the story, like a space opera. It's like a, it's like a fun space opera. I love the dialogue. I thought it was so funny. I love the characters, uh, the couple that gets together, which I won't spoil, but I loved them. So they're one of my favorite couples now. <laughs> like, I loved everything about it. Yeah, the more recognition this book gets, the better for me. I, I remember reading it last year before volume three came out. And uh, yes, Lewis, you can go now. You've, you've come in and drop the stinky fish in the conference table and now you can go. Um, and the this, art is Yeah, so the, the art is really kinetic and colorful. Joyride, yeah, Kristen described it right. It's, it's, um, it's got a little bit of physics, science in it. Sciency physics, almost on a Hickvengers level of interesting creation, ideas, concepts that push the envelope, like the that creature from the eighth dimension that can pretty much grant wishes. Um, the fact that Earth is sealed off, and half the moon and the entire Earth is sealed off, and they have to es uh, escape via the dark side of the moon. Or is it the light side of the moon? I can't remember. Um, it's the part of the moon that's not uh, encased by the the force shield. And they they steal a spaceship. A couple of people. They get other passengers on board. They collect a crew as they go. The spaceship turns out to be sentient, and that it plays a big part in the book. It has. Um, as Kristen said, a surprise couple in it. It um, has a planet that is making out with itself or something. I can't remember <laughs> that it, yeah. the planet's having sex or something. Yeah, I think and they were doing it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the planet's doing it with itself or something. It releases pheromones in the air and uh, there's all kinds of, um, I mean, they're they're running from something and they're having adventures along the way. I love this book. And now that I think about it, it really should have been in my top 10. I love it that much. I can reread this book, no problem. I know Any it'll never happen, but I would love a hardcover of the three of those. I would, I would upgrade in a second for mm -hmm. that. I think 
the first one's lightly out of print right now from Boom. Yep. Um, I'm not sure, but the I think that the first one's lightly out of print. But it, I, I think you can get it from a third-party seller for pretty cheap if you can't find it in your LCS. I highly recommend this book. This is a blast, absolute blast. And it's such a fast, trippy ride. <laughs> you can breeze through it, and you'll love every second. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Even though it's uh, got some high concepts in it, it's not over your head. Mm -hmm. It's pretty inventive, really, with a lot of lighthearted humor in it, too. It's got... Um, Besides being funny, it's fun and lighthearted and still deals with um, some heavy subjects, but I, I love this book. I love it. Let's see. Dean from England just sold his identity crisis. Okay, good job, Dean. Some people have some absolutes. All right, so I have another question, Spartan Blue. I really like The Flash, but I have no idea where to start between New 52, Rebirth, whatever other eras there are. Ooh, what should I read and in what order? Hmm, do you have an answer for that, Kristen? Or is this I've never read a Flash book. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I would suggest Flash, the Jeff Johns collection. I would read that, and if you like Flash, you can, yeah, there's a good recommendation by Faria. Mark Wade's run on Flash is good. Jeff John's run on Flash is good. And New 52 is okay. Rebirth Flash is great. But you need to know that and Batman are the most connected to Flashpoint. So you have to have a background in Flashpoint to really get the most out of Flash, I think, in Rebirth. So I would go with John's or Wade's Flash if I were you and see how you like those. Planets having sex is strange. The universe was formed from the Big Bang, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess so. That's a good point. Philip Duncan, welcome. So we waxed poetic about how much we loved Joyride. Does that leave us one more book to talk about? Yeah, one more book, yep. Well, I know we're both going to wax way poetic about this book. I know you must have loved this book. Well, uh, I, have, I have some admitting to do, though. Oh, all right. So Supergirl being super. I was told to read it for my co-host, Maddie and Freya. Thank you, guys. I actually very much enjoyed it. It was my first super book of any kind. Oh, really? I am known to not be a fan of Superman. So I've never tried to branch out into any... Okay, wait, this broadcast's over. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am open to things, though. I'm a very open person. So That's I, true. You know, I, I will try something eventually, maybe, if someone convinces me to. But I never had. So I went into it thinking, I don't know about this. <laughs> But I really loved it. And the only thing is, I, I wish there was more because I liked it so much, which is a good thing. It left me wanting more because I would still like to see this character continue. I loved all her friends. I loved everything she went through. It was an origin story to the point of like, there wasn't much of her in a cape and being a superhero. It was just her being like her teenage self and dealing with things. And I love that. Yeah, that's well said. She's learning how to be human as well as dealing with how to be super. Uh, she gets a giant, incredible zit, and she deals with teenage anxiety and <laughs> cell phones. Uh, the track team, boys, her friends, they, she deals with. Uh, is, that, is this something you read digitally? Um, yes, I yeah. read it on Hoopla. So it's got it's written by Mariko Tamaki with amazing art by Joelle Jones, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite creators. Yeah, that art um, was incredible. Yeah, it really was. And the coloring was great. And her origin story, it's kind of an Elseworlds origin story that she crashes to Earth too. 
She hasn't met her cousin Superman yet. I don't even think she, not much is known about Superman in this world. I don't think she even knows she's related to him yet. Oh, I don't want to show you the zit scene. Um, I never although want to is, see that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> although it is a great scene. The high school part is really well written. The home life part is will, really well written. I can't say enough about this book. I think that uh, Mariko Tamaki did a great job retelling the story. And I, as I've said in my review about this book, I've been reading Supergirl. I'm not going to try and get all gatekeepery, but I've been reading Supergirl a long time. And this is my favorite Supergirl story of all time. And I think that everybody needs to read this book, whether you like superheroes or not. This book is more about, as it says, well, it says being super, but it's more about being human and learning to deal with the feelings and emotions that a person who realizes they have superpowers, dealing with the emotions that come with that, plus usual teenage angst. This is a great book. I just, I can't say enough about this book. It is it is brilliantly written, brilliantly drawn. I love this book to pieces. So you say that's your favorite. So if a person like me, that's the only thing I've read from Supergirl, did I just set the bar too high? <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. If you started out with this, the other, um, there is a lot of, Supergirl has actually been written fairly well recently. Um, Peter David's run is good. Then there's another run. I'm blanking on his name. He's got three or four books about her. I'll have to. I'll. Ha I'd have to look that up. She's. Um. She's actually been done pretty well in New Fifty Two. The the best storyline I think in all of New Fifty Two was when she loses her memory and becomes a Red Lantern. Uh, if you don't read superhero stories, you won't know much about Red Lanterns. But a Kryptonian with Red Lantern powers, Red Lanterns are basically angry or they want revenge. Uh, I, forget, I forget now what the red part is, anger or revenge or um, the, what the red represents. I'm, try, I'm blanking on it now. I, I think it's anger and she's angry about something without her memory and she becomes a Red Lantern, and that is just the coolest storyline in New 52 that is collected in Red Lantern's, I don't know, maybe Volume 6, I don't actually know, Volume 5. So, you know, Jeff Le yeah. <laughs> Red Lantern is angry Faria, says Faria. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jeff Lebb uh, has written a, a really good Supergirl in the Batman Superman run. Those are some absolutes I need to get. The Batman Superman with Supergirl in it. Uh, Toxic Me Seeks says, my dad is looking for floating shelves. Can you suggest any, please? Floating shelves? Hmm. Uh, I am not an expert on floating shelves. I, all I know really is the Billies by Ikea and the Kalax by Ikea. I know you those can put cheap floating shelves on Amazon. What are floating there. shelves? Um, are those, those things kind, that... Yeah, to my, to what I'm thinking of at least, I could be wrong, but those kind that makes it look like there's like a stack of books just floating in the air. Like you can't actually see what they're sitting on. Oh, cool. They look neat, but I don't have any. Uh, I don't either. Toxic also asks, have you seen the new Deadpool? Are you a fan of superhero movies at all? Uh, yeah, of course. I do read superhero books. I'm just not well versed in DC. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, I saw Deadpool and I loved it a lot. I'm going to see it again with my daughter who loved the first Deadpool movie. I loved it a lot too. I saw it with my parents. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yarny, yeah. Sterling Gates, Supergirl. That's a good Supergirl also. That's a good run. And David Riley is saying. New 52 care always seemed angry though. Yeah, she did have a bit of an attitude. My favorite movies, what are your favorite superhero movies? Doesn't matter if DC or Marvel. Um, what's my favorite movie? 
I love the Dark Knight Batman Begins trilogy by Christopher Nolan. I would say those are my favorite. I love all the Marvel movies, all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a single one of them that I dislike. I don't quite get the disdain for the Ant-Man movies. They're fun and frothy and lighthearted and mm -hmm. funny, which I get, I love. Yeah, I do too. Um, it was really nice after the ending of the Avengers movie to get served up a little Ant-Man to relieve you of that ending yeah. from Infinity War, yeah. which was a rough ending. I love uh, Thor Ragnarok, and I know a lot of people had problems with like how funny it was, but that's why I liked it. That's why I liked it too. It was yeah. a, it, he poked fun at himself, so and good. I, I, the Hulk was great in it. I loved that movie. I did too. And Hela is a great bad oh, gal. Oh gosh, yeah. It's um, yeah. There's uh, even Iron Man three I liked, and that gets a lot of dislike. I. And I liked Thor, it a lot too. Yeah, Thor two gets a lot of dislike. I liked it. I there's not a Marvel movie I didn't like. Uh, my wife and I, the one superhero movie that I can get my wife to see is Spider Man, mm. and she and I really both like Spider Man Homecoming. Homecoming was so good. I agree. I really enjoyed that. So, what are you currently reading? Well, I'm hoping to finish up Hick Avengers after this. <laughs> okay. But that's taken up most of my time. I should say that. Yeah. The smart thing in reading it straight through. Yeah, I, I kept wanting to grab other things because usually I like to read multiple things, but I was like, I can't do it. I will forget everything. <laughs> right. And if you if you stop in the middle of that and go do something else and return to it, you're you're dead. You're going to be lost. Mm -hmm. So my advice to anybody out there with any Hickman, even including Fantastic Four and Secret Warriors, those are the books I've read so far besides Hick Avengers. Don't uh, slow down. Just keep at it be, and take notes if you want to talk to it about it with somebody. Because especially Hick Avengers, there the story arcs in Fantastic Four are easy to remember, but the Story arcs in Hickvengers 1 were really intense. Yeah. I regret not taking notes during that first half, but I was so confused. So <laughs> that's my note. I was confused. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. If it's your first Avengers book, I just, I wasn't even familiar with many of the characters mm -hmm. that got introduced in it. So I just learned to go with the flow. Mm hmm. That's what I kept telling myself. I'm like, oh yeah, they exist. I have to just be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, that's how I am with all X-Men books. I just mm -hmm. assume something's happened and just go forward. Otherwise, I'd have to start at X-Men 1 and read straight through, and I ain't doing yeah. that. I just <laughs> assume that all mutant kind got wiped out. All the humans <laughs> died. Uh, all the women are you know, have no superpowers or something. I, whatever event has happened, I just assume that that's it. Um, e. Tyler is asking about Hickman's shield. And I have, uh, I read this. I have not read the second one yet. I just got it in the mail yesterday. I loved the shield book. And once I read the second shield book, I will be doing a review of it and his ultimates run. That's after I finish Hickvengers 2, though, but I highly enjoyed this. Very high concept, very intense uh, conspiracy theory type of thing with a lot of historical characters in it that are very interesting. I loved it. Jess, do you think it's worth it to read all the Realm of Kings omnibus instead of just the Abner Gar Guardians Omni? I th think so. That's what I'm going to do this winter. That's going to be my winter readathon. Is Annihilation, Annihilation Conquest. This isn't an order. The War of Kings, the Realm of Kings, the Road to War of Kings, and then I believe DNA's um, Guardians of the Galaxy is thrown in. Oh no. DNA's Guardians of the Galaxy is in the War of Kings, Realm of Kings, Road to War of Kings. Yeah, I think it's worth it for you to read all three of those books because I'm going to be doing that. And it's all, all those Guardians of the Galaxy are contained in those books. 
So I think it's worth your while to read all that, in my humble opinion, because I'm going to do it. So why shouldn't you do it? Any other questions for the chats? We're, uh, I'm reading Hickvengers 2. Kristen's reading Hickvengers 2 also. And I'm also reading All New Wolverine because I'm going to do a massive review of it later in the day and release it later in the week. I may start that after I'm done because I feel like the light may not be the word, but it's going to be lighter than Hickvengers at least. Yeah. It is, it is wonderful. I included it in my top 10 books of all time. I like it so much. I can see going back to that, rereading it all the time, and I will pick up an omnibus of that in a heartbeat. Mm. Faria is saying, Kristen, we need to make you, some, make you read some Superman books. I know Maddie will make you. Mm. She hasn't yet. <laughs> <laughs> Spartan, what Ant-Man comics would you suggest reading? I love the movies. I have the perfect book for you. The Nick Spencer Complete Collection is a great Ant-Man book that is extremely similar to the character in the movies. We just reviewed it last week for Omnibros Live, and it's great. It is a super fun read. I love that book. Let's see, uh, there's some love for all new Wolverine in the chat. Does the Fantagraphics Yuzagi Yojimbo end satisfying or do you need to continue? I haven't read it, but I know that everybody loves the sagas. I have only read saga number one, so I'm not the best person to ask that question, but I think you should read Fanographics, and then continue on with the Dark Horse collections. Iron Cardinal's reading Dan Slott's She-Hulk. I like that book. That's really well-written, She-Hulk. And Faria is seconding Spencer's Ant-Man. Yeah, we all liked it in the Omni Bros. Uh, we had all five of us on at once. And uh, we all agreed. That we loved it and i'm becoming super aware of how much i say uh and um i'm gonna I, i'm gonna have to <laughs> stop saying that i almost said it right there that is really annoying for the record i didn't even notice so oh well now i pointed it out <laughs> now i'll notice Darth Vader hardcover volume one. Great book. I loved it. And dad is reading Thor by Walt Simonson. Also a good choice. Okay. I think that that wraps it up. This has been great, Kristen. I appreciate you coming on the show and talking comics with me. Thanks I appreciate having. the chat. Yeah. And the chat was really good. We got some good questions and good insights from the chat. Uh, Kristen, why don't you give another plug to Fangirls Assemble? <laughs> Fangirls Assemble tonight at 8 p.m. Easter. We're going to talk Hickvengers, what we're going to read after that, uh, Hulls, and it's going to be a really good time. So check it out. And that's every Sunday at 8 o'clock, right? Yes, every single Sunday on the Omnibus Collectors Network. Right. And that is Fangirls Assemble which is exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing that tonight. Don't let Faria take over the whole thing because she has sharp <laughs> elbows. <laughs> okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks, Kristen. And that ends our episode for today. Peace and love. Peace and love. Bye, guys.